You think you know Blender? Think again. Blender has so many incredible features, most of which are unknown to many of you. And the list grows even longer with every new Blender update. You've guessed it, it's time for another episode of everybody's favorite Blender series in which I show you all the things you can do in Blender. Episode 4. When using color ramps in Blender, setting up your color stops, which are these tiny little things up here, can be a tedious process. If you want to select single colors, click on the stop you want to change, hover your mouse over the color bar down below and hit E. Now click anywhere on the screen to select the color of your choice. If you want to add an entire gradient of colors, hover over the gradient bar instead of a color stop and hit E again. Now click, hold and drag over the colors that you want. It's super simple and it's an effective way to create some nice looking gradients. Since Blender's latest 3.5 update, we now have a real-time compositor, meaning you can enable compositing directly inside of your viewport in Blender. To do this, go into Rendered View and click on the drop-down arrow up here. Now set the compositor to be either enabled in your camera, meaning it will only show when you're in your camera's view, or set it to always to be able to see your compositing from any angle and even outside of your camera's view. I think this is a great addition, allowing for way faster iteration on your compositing. A quick and handy modeling tip when using Vertex Select, which you can select by clicking up here or by pressing 1 on your keyboard in edit mode, is to select a vertex and hit V. This rips the vertex apart, allowing you to move it freely without attachment to your mesh. Alternatively, you can also press Alt V to enable rip fill, which will also rip the vertex loose, but instead leaves no hole behind. Turntable animations are a staple in presenting your models to companies and clients. So here's a very simple way to set this up in a procedural matter using geometry nodes. Add a plane and add a geometry node system to it. Remove the group input node, effectively removing the plane, and add a mesh line node to it. Set the count to 1 to create one single vertex. Add an instance on points node to instance our turntable object and add an object info node which allows us to choose an object to instance. Add a scene time node, plug that into a combine XYZ and use the Z output to only rotate our object on the Z axis based on the time passed in our project. The final step is to align our object with our floor. So add a bounding box node to find the outer edges of your mesh. A separate XYZ node to isolate only the Z values which we need to move it up. A math multiply node set to negative 1 to invert our Z data. A combine XYZ to merge the data into a Z based vector again. And finally a set position node to actually move the mesh up and align it with our floor. You now have created a very simple procedural turntable animation in which you can very simply and procedurally choose the object you wish to show. Having trouble remembering all those shortcuts that I keep on using in my tutorials and videos? Well, CG Boost has a free, easy to use cheat sheet containing all of Blender's shortcuts. You can download it through the link in the description. It's 26 pages long and contains a nicely categorized overview, so it's easy to find whichever shortcut you might need for your project. It's a very convenient cheat sheet, which will save you a lot of time because shortcuts will help you speed up your workflow. I've gotten quite a few comments asking how my viewport wow. renders in such a painterly fashion and isn't all pixelated like most of yours are. Well, the answer is actually very, very simple. In Cycles, go to the Render Properties tab and enable the Denoise option for the viewport and voila, those nasty sample pixels are gone, which to me is super important because I, I just hate to see those pixels. So turn it on, makes your life a little bit better, I promise. If you want to learn Blender, you have to spend time putting what you learn into practice. If you want help learning Blender effectively, I recommend checking out Blender Academy. Blender Academy has created a perfect course for beginners, which is designed to help you learn the most, the fastest. Besides hours worth of clear and beginner friendly course content, their instructors reach out and discuss your goals with you. Blender Academy's instructors are available to answer all your questions. So if you get stuck, you have an easy way to get unstuck. So how serious are you about learning Blender? If you are truly serious about Blender becoming your job, then Blender Academy can provide you with the knowledge and guidance to get you there. Make sure to check out Blender Academy through the link in the video description and use code Kaizen to get 20% off on your first month. Oh, and if you're not ready for a course just yet, at the very least, make sure to check out their YouTube channel where their instructor Alex will teach you the basics of Blender in one of their high quality YouTube videos. 
composition is key in getting high quality renders and good storytelling in your artworks. To help you with this, Blender has composition guides. Select your camera, go to the object data properties, open up the viewport display tab, and finally the composition guides tab. Now you can choose whichever composition guide type works for you. I usually use thirds or the golden ratio. Another cool 3.5 feature is the newly added support for VDM brushes in sculpting. VDM or Vector Displacement Map brushes are a very easy way to sculpt in complete mesh objects on your sculpts. You can create your own VDM brushes, but you can find them online as well. Blender has provided a demo file showcasing how easy it is to use them. So here I have this basic human head mesh on which I can just simply add features with one click and just select different types of VDM brushes click, drag and just draw them on anywhere on my sculpts. Super cool stuff and this is definitely the dawn for a new era of sculpting in Blender. Sometimes you want a wireframe render with a solid view and your nice lighting. So to do that enter the overlays menu. This is a very convenient list of overlays which you can enable or disable in the viewport. Enable the wireframe overlay and set the opacity to your choosing. I'm also going to disable the floor grid, X and Y axes, origin and 3D cursor. Next go into rendered view. If you render out the image now the wireframe doesn't show which makes sense because these are viewport overlays. So instead go up here to view and choose viewport render image. This will give you your model with the wireframe and your lighting it's not going to be the same quality as doing an actual render however this will be fine for portfolio presentation type renders in which you just want to show the wireframe with the lighting on your object do you have two similar objects which you want to look identical or so to say have shared object data? Just select both of them and hit Ctrl L and choose link object data. Now if you change one mesh the other also changes. This is similar to copying an object with Alt plus D but you can use this to replace an object in your scene with an already existing object in the exact same position as well as doing this after the fact instead of having to think about this beforehand. When moving an object with G, the transform tool, you can lock it to an axis using the respective keyboard input X, Y or Z. Alternatively, and in my opinion more easily, you can also click and hold the middle mouse button on your mouse and just move your mouse in a certain axis direction to move the object along that respective axis. Another one of those quick little things that might save you a second here and there, but in the span of multiple years will save you hours. In heavier, larger projects, your viewport can really start lagging. This is often due to the amount of polygons, particles, volumes, etc. in your scenes. A quick fix for this problem, although not 100% guaranteed, is the simplify option which you can find in the render properties. Enable it and lower the max subdivision, max child particles and volume resolution. Do make sure you only do this for your viewport because you don't want to change your final render. This usually helps a ton to make your viewport more responsive. So you might have more amazing tips you want to share with the world as well. If you do, leave a comment down below using the lamp emoji and I might just use it in my next video on tips for Blender. Now like I said at the beginning of this video, the list of features in Blender is practically endless. So if you want to learn more tips, make sure to check out one of the previous episodes right here. And as always, I'm gonna wrap this up by saying thank you to all of my amazing patrons for supporting the channel.